having a security camera is a great way to keep an eye on things when you're away from your home. But cameras that you use around your house need either an ethernet connection plugged directly into the camera itself or Wi-Fi to work. What if you want to keep track of things somewhere a little more remote? That's where something like the Reolink Go PT Ultra, an LTE security camera, can help. I'm Wander 001. Let's get into it. To start things off, Reolink did reach out to me and provide me the Go PT Ultra for review. Reolink has no say in the content of this video. Starting off with some general specifications of the camera. It is 4.8 inches high with a width of 3.8 inches at the top. And then down here where the ball is for the camera, it has a width of 1.9. Overall operating temperature, 14 degrees Fahrenheit up to 131 degrees and is IP64 weather rated. And I will say during my testing time, the camera did get rained on quite a bit and it survived perfectly fine as you would expect. Zooming in on the business end of the camera itself. Up here at the top, this is your speaker. Coming down on either side, you have two 850 nanometer IR lights. And then underneath that, you have two LED lights. The LEDs are 2.4 watt and have a color temperature of 6,500 Kelvin. That's going to give you a nice daylight replacement. On the left-hand side here, you have your daylight sensor. And then on the right hand side, you have your status LED light. Right here, this big portion at the bottom, this is your PIR sensor. This is a heat based motion sensor that's needed for all battery powered cameras. Coming down a little further, you'll see that is your microphone. Now, what I like about this is as I move this, you'll notice that the PIR sensor follows the ball head. And that's important because you want the PIR sensor to be pointing at whatever the camera's looking at so that it has a better chance of triggering. Coming to the middle, I did skip over this. This is your camera lens. This is a 1-127 CMOS sensor with a resolution of 3840 by 2160. It has a horizontal field of view of 90 degrees, a vertical field of view of 47 degrees, and a 110 degrees diagonal. The frame rate that you can expect from your videos, whether it's day, night, or what have you, is 15 frames a second, and the camera does support 10 times digital zoom. But because this is a pan tilt camera, you don't have to worry about just the field of view. You have the ability to pan, and your pan tilt ratio is 355 degrees panning with 140 degrees tilting, meaning there's going to be very little that you can't see with this camera. If we roll our camera head forward, this is going to give us access to our rubberized door flap right here. It is a nice thick gasket, which will help keep water out should you have any get in here, but the basic shape of it helps prevent that. As you can see, this is your location for your nano SIM for your LTE provider and your micro SD card slot. There also is a reset button right there over in the corner. And I do actually appreciate the fact that on this camera, they let you know how each of them is supposed to slot into the camera instead of having to try and guess on your own. If we come to the top of the camera, there's not a lot to look at. The batteries are housed in here. And this is also where you have your mounting for the camera itself. The mounting arm is actually a two piece system where you actually have to line it up so that this little plastic piece sits in that back nub and then you screw it into the top. This is a hex key screw, which I wish actually was something else. I do understand it's to kind of prevent people from taking it down and messing with it, but if it's in a remote location, I forget the hex key, it could be a problem. On the back, you have your LTE antenna. So this just screws into place right there and then has adjustability so you can manipulate it to get your best signal. Right next to that is our USB-C charging port. If you need to take this down to charge, this is how you would do it. But you could also pair this with a solar panel to give you pretty much infinite power in a remote location. We'll touch on that a little later. The gasket for this, again, very thick. Don't have to worry about water getting in there. As we move our way down to the bottom, and we'll 
flip it over in this direction to do this we have a flap for power opening this up there is a power switch on or off if i flick this off it is no longer going to try and connect to lte this is very useful especially if you're bringing this inside a building where you don't have a strong lte signal and the camera's constantly trying to call out to lte you'll burn your battery up much faster so just make sure to power that off in a situation like that i want to come back to the underside of our camera here and talk about our LTE SIM and our micro SD card slot. Our micro SD card slot ships with a 32 gigabyte card from Reolink, but you can have up to a 128 gig card in this camera. The LTE slot, pretty much think of it as the SIM card that goes in your smartphone. What that means is depending on the carrier, you'll have to set up that SIM card first and then plug it into your SIM slot here. In the US, the phone companies that you can use are AT&T, T-Mobile, or an MVNO of one of those carriers. In my case, I used a mid mobile SIM. You have lots of options. I ended up going with a unlimited data one because I wanted to really test out the capacity that this camera could do, as well as how much data those high resolution videos would eat up data wise. So if you're interested, referral link down in the description for mid mobile, not affiliated with this review in any way, shape or form. You can also get a plan. Currently, real link lists Germany, the UK and Italy as other compatible areas where you can get an LTE SIM for this. With hardware out of the way, what else do you get with the Reolink Go PT Ultra? Well, let's take a look at what else we get in the box with this camera. Opening things up, little information here. It's gonna be more information. Mounting sticker, warning sticker, quick start guide, antenna, mount for the camera, strap for the camera, mounting plate and hardware, and they even give you a little SIM injector tool there, USB-C to USB-A charging cable, and then the camera itself. Mounting solutions for the camera is something that I always appreciate, and I'm glad Reolink gives you a lot of different ways that you can put this up somewhere. That's always been my problem with a pan tilt camera, is finding a way to mount this. Well, because this is meant to be in remote locations, the fact that you can strap it down to a tree without having to drill into something, priceless. However, considering this is an LTE-based smart camera, the setup process for it is going to be a little different than you have with other Wi-Fi-based smart cameras. So let's take a look at what the setup was like. This will be set up for the Reolink Go PT Ultra. This is the first time that I've actually read the Quick Start manual first because this is an LTE-based camera, not a Wi-Fi camera. It is stated that you need to get your nano SIM from an LTE provider and install that first before moving forward with the rest of the setup process. I will say I was happy that this came with a 32 gigabyte card, but both getting the card and that LTE SIM card in there, very tricky. I have very small hands and fingers, and even for me, that was a little tricky to get to. Once we're ready, we come to the power port here and switch it to on. There's a red light on the top there. There, it started to initialize. Once it starts flashing blue like that, Network connection succeeded. It said network connection succeeded, which is how I know my card is working. The reason you have to put the card in first is if it's not going to connect over Wi-Fi, there's no way for data to transfer. Now that we have the SIM inserted and we're good to go, we're going to open up our real link app and then we're going to select the plus sign in the upper right hand side there. Now it wants me to scan a QR code. The QR code is located on the underside here. So I'm just going to do that really quickly. And now it's starting the initialization phase. It wants me to set up a password for this device. So we're going to do that really quickly. Once we have the password in place, we're going to select next. I'm going to leave this as the name. Next, and here it's giving me some information. Camera should avoid, point to frequently moving objects, strong light, close to strong signal interface, point of a heat source, point to a mirror. So this camera is definitely designed more for, I'm not gonna get a lot of hits, this way I don't have to worry about having a unlimited plan. And so it's giving me the option to save the QR code for sharing of this device to my photo album. I'm going to hit next. And there we go. It is actually set up. It's upside down right now, but let me flip it over and we're going to click into it, get a live feed here really quick. And you can see my studio and how messy it is. It might not actually let me see this because I don't have the antenna installed yet. So let me do that really quick. All right, I have the antenna installed this time. We'll give that a go, making sure that there's no hardware or anything. I am inside, so it could be, yeah, live view failed. It's probably because I'm inside and it doesn't like that with the antenna. Oh, wait, there we go. Okay, and just like that. No prompting for firmware right off the bat, so that's good. That was setup of the Reolink Go PT Ultras. 
Coming back to the camera itself, the Go PT Ultra is compatible with Google Home Voice Assistant and coming soon in the future, Alex A support. The battery in the camera itself is a 21.6 watt hour battery, which cannot be removed. You can see that is a sealed unit. You're not going to be taking that out. If you're not using the solar panel peripheral sold separately, you will have to take this down to charge. But if you use Real Link's compatible solar panel too, which has an output of six watts of power, you can run the camera pretty much all day on just a 10 minute charge. And one of the things that surprised me the most about the Real Link solar panel here, yes, it is an extra peripheral, but this actually needs very little light to function. Here you could see on a cloudy day, I was still getting a charge. And just to top it off, for the first half of my testing, I was using the solar panel here. For the latter half of my testing, I was not using it. And let me tell you, I was doing some things that were burning through the battery much faster than I thought I would be doing. But when I was using the solar panel, I didn't have to worry about that. And if you're gonna have this in a remote location, you're really gonna wanna consider that solar panel add-on because then you can leave this up and not have to worry. Even though the hardware is very solid, an app can make or break a camera. Let's take a look at the Real Link app. This is the application for the Real Link Go PT Ultra. What you see right here is when you first open the Real Link app, you see any connected cameras that you have to the app. For the Real Link Go PT Ultra here, you'll notice that it has a PIR indicator and then a settings bracket. We can access the settings bracket from another location, so I'll show you that a little later. In the lower corner, you could see that there's a sun icon, meaning I do have the option optional solar panel attached to this, as well as a battery life indicator. If I tap the PIR sensor, you can see it's connecting to the camera. And now technically this is a live view. I can tap the PIR sensor again, and you'll see it took a snapshot. And here is indication of 4G. Once you log into the camera, you could see, you'll know it's a live feed because you have your time changing there, as well as right here where it says the name of your camera, just under it, it says 4G, and then lets you know the actual usage. One of the things I'm gonna point out right away on this is this pause. This will pause the live feed from your camera. So if you're trying to mess with some options and don't wanna be using up your data, notice it's at zero right now, that's a quick way to do it so that you can play with all these other options. Starting at the top here, this is actually a siren. If I select this, it will trigger a siren, which sounds like this. <laughs> I also have a flashlight. If I select that, what that will do is turn on the LED lights outside and it gets this little blue tinge at the top. I wish that Real Link would change this so that I had a better indication that this was on. Maybe fill the whole thing in white or something like that so I know. To the right of that are these four boxes. If I select this, right now we're on one screen, meaning I will only see one of my Real Link cameras. But if I select this, I can have up to four Real Link cameras in a live feed right here. Right there I have one of my disconnected ones showing up there but you could have up to four. And then selecting that brings me back to having my camera front and center. This is our settings bracket. We'll talk about that in a moment, but skipping over our settings, we have our three dots right here. This will allow you to switch between night mode and day mode. Right now it's on auto. I can tell it only do black and white, which will switch it over into night vision mode right there. Or I can select to only show in color. Now there is an option that will allow you to use the LED lights at night so you can have colored night vision. And then right there, I had a little indication that a pet walked through frame. So that's kind of a nice thing in a live feed. It will let you know what's walking through frame. Selecting our three dots again, we have immersive mode. That's gonna bring up your cameras as big as they can get without showing you any of the options. I am going to select back and come to our three dots one more time. And then we have picture in picture. This is another great thing that Real Link does where you can have your Real Link camera open while you do other things on your smartphone allowing you to see. If this is the first time that you're doing this and using an Android phone, you might have to allow it permission to do that. We talked about the pause button right there, but next we have our audio. So right now I can hear the audio coming from the camera. If I select that, it's muted. Right here we have a camera. Selecting that takes a snapshot of what you see on the screen. And then right here we have record. So this is recording in live time what is happening on the screen. Right now there's not a lot happening, but this gets saved and you can share it. I'll show you where later. To the right of the camera option, we have low. What this will allow you to do is change how much data gets used. So notice I bumped that up. And if we go all the way up to clear, right now it's 4,000, yeah. So right there, now if I pinch to zoom, can see my, my wishing well there. Notice right now it's on low, but if I bump that up to clear, 
you should see the pixelation change. So there, you, you could see the difference in video quality and the bird flying away, comparison from high to low. Just keep in mind, high is going to use more of your data. So if you did not get a high data SIM card for this, you might not want to use this feature. And there's a bird. So if we zoom in, notice it's defaulting back to low. So if I go high, it'll clear up, and then that bird should be much clearer. Oh yeah, okay, make me zoom it again. There you go. Bird's even farther away this time, but that's all handled through there. To the right of that, we have the ability to go full screen, which we do get most of our options. Notice we get a couple extra ones now with our microphone being shifted up and our PTZ controls, but we're gonna swap that back and move further down because right here we have our talk control. If I select this, I have the option to tap to talk, which is full duplex, meaning I don't have to hold this down to talk and hear somebody. I can tap to turn that off. You have earphone mode, which is noiseless. So if you needed to use earphones and then you have your volume over here, which we have to enable talking first and then our volume. So we've got our volume control right there to allow us to hear from the camera better. We're gonna turn that off and then hit the app. Next we have clip. Clip is a nice feature where if I select it, it will actually allow me to zoom in on a specific location. So over here, I'm gonna select that well, and then it's zoomed in just there and it's going to record the full screen. If I select a picture, it's going to take a picture of that zoomed area. If I hit record, it's only going to record what's happening in that zoomed in punched in area. I'm going to stop the recording. The box itself is actually adjustable. You can see right there. So if you want to target specific details in a location. Next we have our PTZ controls. Right now you can see I'm in my centered location. If I select right there, you're going to see the camera is going to move and then you see arrows indicating which direction it's moving. And we're going to bring this all the way down to its lowest point so you can see where I have it strapped up. Now the one thing, you can see there are arrows right there, but I wish that there was something along the edge letting me know, hey, that's the furthest point that it can go. If you didn't want to use the toggles, you could use this as a joystick by pressing in the middle and pushing it where you want it to go. So those were our PTZ controls. To the right of that, we have motion point. So we have First, return to motion point. You saw it centered itself. Reset motion point, meaning this is now the reset, which will make more sense if I do this. If I bring it back down to where I want it, kind of there, I come here, reset motion point. Now this is set as the definitive motion point. I'm gonna swing this over this way quick and then come back here and then select return. This will make more sense now. So there you go. That is the new point of which I set. That's what reset is. And then you have auto return to motion point can turn that on or off, depending on if you were looking around and forgot to put it back, well, this will swing it back, and then how long it takes before it gets back there. So right now it's on 60 seconds of nothing happening before it returns to home. Next to that, we have preset points. So you can have specific points. So if I come and select add, I would come over to my PTZ, and we're gonna move this over and come to a preset point. We're gonna add, we're gonna confirm, and now I have two points. I can select one, and it will automatically move the camera back to that location. Right there, move it back to that one. And then with our motion points, return to home if you ever worry about it getting off track. Last bit here, our three dots is our calibration. Selecting calibrate will walk the camera through its full left to right panning as well as its vertical axis. So you can see that it can pan a full 360 degrees as well as up and down. Now it does hang out in its most furthest points a little longer than I think it would need to, but here you can see kind of what time of day it is and you're getting these sweeping views of what's going on, kind of giving you an idea of how clear this is, even on its lowest setting, helping you to preserve your precious, precious data, especially if you don't put a large card in it like I did. I ended up using an unlimited card, which has about 35 to 40 gigs of data, but I wanted to make sure I had enough when I was running my tests. And here you can see calibration is complete. And then we can select our X and those were our PTZ controls. To the right of that, we have our playback. Now, playback is going to be where all of those motion clips that happen are accessible. What I want you to notice here is there is a timeline, and along this timeline, you can move your little red indicator, and that's gonna show you, hey, things have happened. If I wanted to, there is a filter option right here. If I select that, I can say, I only wanna see things with pets, and then hit these three dots. Now, only pets will show up. So if I select this, up here, it's gonna show me something that had a pet hopefully. All right, so there's no action on that one. We're going to come over to this one, which should have a pet, and that's not a pet. That is a person. 
but there could be another action that happens along with him walking around. What I want you to pay attention to is up here, you have the ability to slow it down. So right now it's on one times, but I could slow it down to half speed, making it slow-mo. So we're gonna speed that back up. This is also how I would download this clip. I can select the download and this will bring us to our download options. Again, here is a great feature that Real Link has. This will allow you to adjust your clip length. Notice it's 14 seconds, but let's say I really didn't care about what he was doing after this point. I could select that and now my clip is only six seconds and I could see what it's doing and then select download and that will download it to my device, but I can also share if I wanted to. I'm gonna select done and that is downloading of our clip. If I select this here, this will also show you a different view of your clips. And if I wanted to see everything when I did that, I'd have to do that. And then it will show you in more of a thumbnail layout. We also have the ability to select a drop down and pick a date. You can see based on when I've been doing this, the wake dates I can go back to and select and then view something that happened. Or I can select it from the timeline up here. And we're gonna close that because that is everything that we can do for camera controls and downloading of our data for the Real Inco PT Ultra. But that doesn't mean that there's not more that we can do for this camera. And that's all handled through the settings up here at the top. We're gonna select our sprocket icon and it's gonna bring us right here. Notice we have our name, so Real Link Go. I could select this and it's gonna give me some personal information for the camera, so I'm not gonna show you that. Coming down, we have battery. If you were charging this, the battery icon would actually be green, but here you can see it's at 87%. If I select this, it's gonna give me a chart letting me know, hey, you can see I had it at 60 and it's slowly been increasing as I've been using the solar panel. Coming down to display, here we go. This is gonna give us a lot of options. First being, I can change the orientation of this for viewing, maybe I want to, Flip vertically. Well, there you go, it's upside down. I'll flip it back. Maybe I wanna flip it horizontally. For whatever reason, you need something to be on one side of the camera or not. All of this is done through these options, which is great, because I see a lot of cameras that do flip vertical, but never have I seen one that does flip horizontally. We have our stream selecting this. Here it'll let you know, clear, and fluent. Clear is gonna give you the best at 3840 by 2160, 15 frames per second, maximum bit rate of 3072. Fluent, that's gonna be your lower to save on battery as well as data. And that's gonna give you a resolution of 896 by 512, frame rate of 15, maximum bit rate of 672. If I select any one of these, I can come in and change my options. So here, if I come up to frame rate, default, but I could lower this if I wanted to, but keep that maximum resolution, as well as my bit rate. I can say, well, I want it to go all the way up, use all the data if possible. And that's adjustable for these two options right here, which is great. The amount of customization that you get in a real link camera is unlike anything you've seen with any other consumer-based home security camera. Coming down, we have anti-flicker. Selecting this, well, if you live in an area where the LEDs are slightly off, you've probably seen some travel YouTube people do this. Well, this will allow you to adjust the Hertz rate to avoid any flickering. Here we have our day-night mode, as we had set up before. I have it on auto, but you could do color or black and white all the time. And then here we have our brightness. I want you to watch what happens to the screen up here as I adjust the brightness. Notice you can really wash this out or make it almost impossible to see. So you can adjust this as needed. If you place this in a place that gets particularly bright, you can lower your brightness. Or if it's in a darker area, you could try and bump it up so that you can see a little better. This is a great option. Coming down, we have camera name. Notice it's in the bottom right and it's the name of the camera that I gave it. I can select this and I can change the location, date and time, it's top and center right there, again, totally customizable watermark. You don't necessarily need this. That's just the real link watermark, but I like to have it because I test a lot of cameras and I want to know where my video feed is coming from. Here we have privacy mask. Pressing and holding will allow you to create a black square, which will prevent the camera from actually recording anything in that location. You can have up to three and it's a great feature to have on a camera. If there's a specific area, you don't necessarily need to monitor. And then coming down, brightness and shadows. You can see all of these are on auto, but we've got color mode, I could turn auto, which will allow it to do what it does automatically, or I can reset the brightness, reset the shadows all on my own. I'm gonna leave that on auto, but you could do that with black and white and auto for the color night mode. Remember, I was showing you, you could change the brightness, but you could do that for each of the individual modes as well. It is ridiculous, the amount of customization, and we haven't even scratched the surface. That was all just under our display. Next, we have audio. Here we have record audio. If you live in a state that doesn't allow you to record audio, this is how you would turn that off. And then you can have your volume. So you can actually test your speaker to see how it sounds. Light. Well, you have 
infrared, and then those LEDs. So I have it switching between the two, and then you can determine the intensity of your IR lights. So right now it's gonna stay off, I'm gonna turn those on, and the intensity of my IR lights are at their maximum. And then coming down to our spotlight, we have our mode. So this is smart mode, automatically turns on when the camera detects motion, or I can keep them off if I needed to. I also have auto on for live view, so if you're coming in and it's dark, turn that on, spotlights will automatically kick on. And then here is your brightness slider, for your LED spotlights. How bright do you want those to be? Coming down, we have our PIR motion sensor. You can turn this on or off and change its sensitivity. The camera does need the PIR sensor in order to detect things, so I would caution you against actually turning that off. Detection alarm, we can set up a zone for this, meaning, hey, if a person happens to walk over here, set the alarm off. Notice you could do that for vehicle, pet, and other. So you could set up specific zones for detection of precise people. So over here, I care about people. Now notice I, I did the paint mode. I could paint all and then erase what I don't want it to see. But you get that customization for each of those. And then you have motion mark, which is when clear mode is selected, detected moving objects will be marked, which looks something like this. Sensitivity, how sensitive do you want the detections to be? So person, 65 is what I have it at. I don't expect cars here, so I turn that all the way off. And pet, I have up to 71. You can adjust each of the detections. It is remarkable what you can do. Next is object size. Let's say you get child-sized people in your yard. You don't necessarily want to pay attention to that. So you can say minimum or maximum object. So you could say minimum object size of this in order to tell me what's happening or a maximum object size of this. So if I've got a little itty bitty person, here's a box, I can make that smaller, and now it's minimum. Moving objects that are smaller than this will not trigger. I can do a maximum, objects bigger than this won't trigger. So you've got a plethora of customization that you can do. Camera recording on or off, which I have on all the time. You could put it on a schedule if you wanted to, and then you could even set up individuals. I only want vehicle during this time. I only want pets during this time. Lots of options. Post motion recording, this means that once motion has stopped being noticed, how long after that do you want it to record? So in my case, I might move that up to 15 seconds. And then overwrite recordings. This will, if you run out of space on your camera, override your oldest recording. If you don't wanna do that, toggle that off. Coming down, push notification, I have it on. What that will do is when it detects motion, it will send you a notification. You can turn that on or off or schedule. As you can see, I have all the time and I only care about people and pets. I could do other if I wanted to get notifications of other types of movement. Email alert on. This is very similar to your push notifications. You do have to set up an email address for this to send to. So if you don't happen to be in a place that'll allow you to have your smartphone, but you sit in front of a computer all day and can receive email, that's how you can get notifications of things that are happening around your house. Siren, well, right now I have this off, but if I turn this on, what it will do is give us extra options. Siren sound, default, or I could do a custom sound, which I can make a very annoying sounding voice. Hey you, get off my lawn, what are you doing here? Get out of here, go away, I'll call the cops on you. And that's gonna send that information to the camera to play the next time it detects motion or I set the alarm off. Hey you, get off my lawn, what are you doing here? Get out of here, go away, I'll call the cops on you. You can also change your custom sound if you wanted to, or you can use the default sound. Coming back, you have pre-alarm sound, which is if motion is detected, kind of warning somebody that they shouldn't be there. And then down here we have our sound test. We have the ability to schedule this. Again, type of thing that we want, vehicle, pet, or person. Coming down, we have share camera, which will generate a QR code for you to share the camera with somebody else who has the Real Link app. Time lapse is another thing that I really appreciate. Here we go. If I select try now, it gives me a couple of options where moving clouds, sunrise, sunset, construction, blooming, or I could do custom and capture starts, duration, interval, like these are all of your customary time-lapse settings. If you did a time-lapse, you could select it and it would show up here. And then settings for our time-lapse, we can override time-lapse files. So you have too many and you run out of space, you can overwrite them. Time-lapse is not something that I see in a lot of cameras, let alone an LTE version. So I'm happy to see something like that here. And then down here we have advanced. We can change our device password, we can change the date and time, we can reboot, and we can factory restore our device. And then all the way at the bottom, log out of device, 
and delete this device. And that has been everything that we can do for the Reolink Go PT Ultra in the Reolink app. Reolink is one of the manufacturers that has one of the most robust applications for their cameras. So whether you're a novice or an advanced user, you're going to find something in that app that works best for you. And that's why I like all the functionality that Reolink gives you in their app. But after software, what's next? Well, that's testing. And for me, one of the first things I like to test is our audio. How do voices sound from the camera itself and from the application? Let's take a listen. Reolink Go PT Ultra audio test. Sally sells seashells by the seashore. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. Test one, test two, test three, and test. Audio test to the app from the camera. Reolink Go PT Suite. Sally sells seashells by the seashore. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. Test one, test two, test three, and test aside from lots of audio noise in the background. As you heard, sounds not terrible at all, all things considered. What's after that? Video test. What I will say is up there in the right hand corner of the screen, I will have a link to the raw video footage from this that's not being downscaled for this video. Overall, video is pretty good during the daytime. Fast moving targets do lose a little definition during the day, but overall, not bad. Night, as long as it is not a super fast moving target, the IR lights work best. The LED lights are nice to see what's going on, but once you introduce movement, there is ghosting and artifacting, especially on faster moving targets. Think of the LEDs more for quick snapshot of what's going on or a slow moving creature, animal, person. But once you start introducing speed, you're gonna lose a lot of that definition. Again, check out the raw video samples up there in the corner. The other test that I like to do is a detection speed test. Now this was a first for me because this was sitting on 4G LTE and I wanted to test how quickly it would send a signal to my 5G smartphone. Let's take a look. This will be testing notification speed test for the Reolink PTZ LTE. Uh, over here by the wishing well, I know I should be within its field of view. So here we go, let's we'll see just how long it takes to send a notification because there we go, real link. All right, not terrible, not great, but still, if I open that up, person detected, I can select on it, and it will load up the clip. Should have mentioned I'm on 5G on the phone, and the LTE connection right there you can see is 4G, and it's got me right there. Not the fastest on the market, but all things considered, still within an acceptable range of sending that notification to my phone. There is a lot to like about the Reolink PT Go Ultra. I would be doing you a disservice if I didn't point out some of the shortcomings. There is no PT limiter indicator in the app, meaning when I reach the maximum point at which this can no longer go up or down or left or right, I would like to see something flash in the app letting me know that. That's easily fixed with software. The camera itself does not track targets. They do sell a different model that will track a target, meaning I don't have to have the app open for it to follow somebody. Just know what you're getting. Not a complete downfall, but want you to be aware of that if you were thinking this camera could do that. One thing I did notice early on in my testing was that I did get a lot of dew accumulating on the lens itself, especially in the morning when there was a very substantial temperature change. It's not horrible, but it also depends on how you have this mounted. So keep that in mind. Follow the best practices that they lay out in the application when you're setting it up. I do wish that the camera itself had an LTE data indicator somewhere built into the application. Yes, I can open up my mid mobile app and see how much data I've used, but I wish the camera had a way to tell me, hey, this is how much information we fed through the system. It should be able to tell me that. Could come in a software update. The last gripe I have is actually with this door back here. And I have relatively small hands. The channel, the dip to access both the micro SD card and the nano SIM card for your data. Wish this was a little bigger because even I 
had to use a poking implement to push these in. Again, I applaud Real Link for adding little pictures, letting me know how to put this in correctly, but uh, that, that needs to be a little bigger so I can get these in without a problem. Overall, a pan tail camera is a great way to keep an eye on things from just about any angle, and an LTE version lets you place the camera anywhere you can get a phone signal. That might not be something that everyone is looking for, but if you are looking for a camera with that level of flexibility, then the Reolink Go PT Ultra is worth checking out. The amount of features you get that are not locked behind a paywall are great. And the extras you get, like the ability to do that time lapse, custom audio alert, and 32 preset positions, so you can't have it track something, but you have 32 preset spots that you can go to, make this camera one that should be on your short list if you need an LTE pan tilt camera. I can strongly recommend the Reolink Go PT Ultra. If this camera sounds like what you've been looking for, I will have a link for where you can pick one up for yourself in the description area below. Do you know of another LTE outdoor pan tilt camera I should check out? Let me know in the comments section below. If you appreciate the time and effort that goes into making a comprehensive video like this, make sure to hit that like button to help other people find the video as well. If you like what I'm doing here and want to be notified of my next review, hit that subscribe button. Not sure if this is the right camera for you? On screen now, you'll see two other cameras that I have reviewed to help you make a more informed decision for yourself.